Let's dive into Vermont's rich history with Billings Farm and Museum. Today we're in for a fascinating journey as we explore their captivating sheep shearing and live border collie herding demonstrations. Prepare to get your hands on some raw wool as we discover the timeless traditions firsthand. Billings Dairy Farm and Museum has a rich history that dates back over a century. Just a short drive from the famed Woodstock, Vermont, every year Billings Dairy Farm and Museum hosts sheep shearing and herding demonstrations, offering visitors a glimpse into the woolly world of sheep farming. Today we have the good fortune of witnessing these age-old traditions firsthand. Starting off, each guest is greeted a la vaca, but if cow kisses aren't your thing, continue on to the main entrance. Admission was quick and all areas of the historic farm are free of additional charges to enter, as well as free of microtransactions to participate. Yay! This event in particular goes on for two days. They have an on-site creamery and especially for today's event, the lovely fat sheep farm and cabins are serving locally made sheep cheese, free samples, and some of their wonderful cheeses for sale as well. For lunch, there's an American barbecue from the Wicked Awesome Barbecue Food Truck on site. The main lobby hosts a movie theater where visitors can watch a film called A Place in the Land, highlighting the development of Billings Farm and Vermont's conservation history. A large gift shop fit for all ages and price points, featuring Vermont's local cheeses and arts and crafts. Just outside the Welcome Center are scenic pastures, rolling hills, all dappled with historic farm buildings and barns. Expect to see lots of beautiful timber frame construction with stone masonry accents. The weather was brisk and cloudy, a perfect day to enjoy the last bits of that cold winter snap. Don't forget to pick up your sheep shearing passport to guide us along the way. From sheep to shawl, each step of the passport guides us through the fiber art process. At station one, we have skirting. Here, the main goal was to pick out bits of straw and hay. It was pretty well picked clean by the time I reached it but it looks like they're gonna bring out another fleece soon. At station two, we have the washing bins or basins. There's some dirty water left over from the last fleece. Behold, station three is, can you guess, carding. There are lots of hand cards available and a basket with plenty of wool to go around. The hands-on instructors were very sweet and helped give tips on how to get that perfect roll log. Station four, dyeing. A wide assortment of natural dyes and mortons that reflected the types of material farber artists from the 1890s might use, as well as these beautiful yarn examples. Stepping inside another beautiful timber frame building, we have the rest of the stations. A lovely young lady at Station 5, the spinning table, was kind enough to show the many ins and outs from using a drop spindle to a double treadle spinning wheel. I found the drop spindle to be a bit tougher than Master. How about you? She makes it look so easy. In between the spinning demonstration table and station six, the weaving table, were some wire hooks and wool so little ones can spin their very own woolen bracelet to wear. And nothing says weaving better than color. It's amazing how much work goes into clothing people. These crafts were once the backbone of the global economies and spinning and weaving was once considered a noble skill. In modern times, however, they're less lucrative as the textile industries become increasingly industrialized. But still, there's a lot of spinning and weaving enthusiasts coming together, sharing their skills, and showcasing their work, as well as learning new techniques. At Station 7, we have the universe sending you a sign to finish that project. There's some knitting, felting, and crochet projects to oogle. I'm not so sure about that fuzzy black square. I knitted yarn like that once, and that was enough. Did you know that scientists still haven't found the cure for second sock syndrome? There were demonstrations back to back and plenty of opportunities to watch the Border Collies work the sheep with ease. Those dogs are so well trained. Right next to the herding demonstrations was a petting barn. There was plenty of information on hand with sanitizing protocols and breed descriptions. As we take a break from these live demonstrations, let's explore the museum and dive deeper into the rich history of sheep farming. Here you'll find antique tools, traditional farming equipment, and captivating displays that highlight the importance of sheep as part of both Vermont's heritage as well as our global cultural heritage. The 1890s farm manager house was built with a lot of purposes in mind to support the Billings farm and their agricultural operations. It was meticulously restored to its 19th century heyday. There's a farmhouse with a business office for the farm manager, George Atkin at the time. 
and a private living space for his family, a creamery that's known for its production of butter, and look at this adjoining ice house. Wow. Visitors can also explore the farmstead gardens as well as an apple orchard located just down the hill right there outside the farmhouse. After a brief self-guided tour of the restored 1890s farm manager's house, let's pick up some local ice cream from the farmhouse scoop shop, as well as a coffee. So good and so creamy. Next up, we're in luck. The food truck has a shortish line and we picked out some poutine and a burger. Yum, it's so filling. It really tastes just like Southern good old barbecue. One of today's highlights is authentic sheep shearing demonstration. You'll get a first-hand look at the historical tools and techniques used by early sheep farmers to shear their flocks. A master of his craft, the sheep shearer ensures that the shearing process is both efficient and stress-free for the sheep. With his gentle touch and deep knowledge of sheep, he guides the sheep to an almost hypnotic slumber, maintaining a calm and soothing presence. He's taking his time explaining each step of the process as he guides us through time with the tools at hand. The sheep shearer starts off with his hand clippers. You might recognize them as onion cutters or hedge clippers online, but this efficient design remains largely unchanged over the eons. A true art form in itself, the shearer's quick and precise movements are a testament to his years of experience. Next up is hand cranked power shears. That poor kid. I'm sure his arms are gonna be tired the next day. The shearer said that the easiest job is the shearing part and the hardest is the crank work. Even though it's amazing how much faster the clippers are, it was funny hearing the motor slow down as his assistant tired and then pick up again as they gained more steam to crank. The fleece is carefully removed and it's easy to appreciate the beauty and softness of the wool. Everyone got to handle a sample of the fleece as they passed around bits of freshly shorn wool. This natural fiber has been an essential part of human history, providing warmth and comfort for centuries. Lastly, we leave the 1890s to enter the modern age with these fully electric clippers. It's such a difference how every aspect of daily life from gathering wool to fashioning clothes has been affected by modern tech. I don't know, what do you think will be the next development in sheep technology? Whether you're a beginner or an expert, there's always something new to learn. And there's no better way to do it than attending a spinning demonstration, class, or witnessing the weaving on a loom, like here. Wrapping things up, prepare to spend a full day at this event. There is so much to explore. Well, you heard it here first. Whether you're a history enthusiast, an animal lover, or someone who's simply seeking a unique and educational experience, Billings Dairy Farm and Museum, sheep shearing and hurrying demonstrations are not to be missed. The sheep shearing event is a perfect way to connect with Vermont's agricultural heritage as well as support local farmers. Come and be a part of this remarkable journey into the past and present. And thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more exciting adventures. Thank you, and I appreciate you. Until next time, if you can't remember my name, just yell knitting and I'll turn around.